Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to KSB Daily Update for March 22nd. <laughs> Beautiful Monday, and this is the last week most committees will be having uh, hearings and working bills before moving to the floor and ultimately conference committees in the, in the two weeks after that. Um, so we're going to quickly go through some of the things that happened today, and we want to start with the floor debate on Senate Bill 63. Scott, you covered that. Well, yeah, I listened to that, Mark, and uh, it, it advanced to um, final action, which I guess will be uh, voted on tomorrow. Uh, basically, the bill requires an in-person uh, learning option for all school districts by March 31st, I believe. Uh, the, originally, this was Senate Bill 235, which got defeated in the House. And that had set a deadline of March 26th in perpetuity. Uh, this one was just for this year. And uh, there was some debate on the floor. Uh, uh, proponents of this bill think we got to get kids back in school. And of course, we know that most school districts are back in school in some form or fashion. Uh, maybe one or two aren't. And uh, opponents are just saying this is an overreach. This is what local school boards are for. So we'll see how the vote turns out uh, tomorrow. So you still have an opportunity to contact your House member. KSB is still opposed to the bill as overreach. It, it clearly is much less drastic than, than the original bill. Uh, so it's been approved, improved, I guess, or made less worse. But uh, we still think this is something the legislature doesn't need to be involved in. Uh, on the subject of pandemics and health and vaccinations, Leah, you, I think, covered a, a hearing on Senate Bill 212 today. And you're muted. Sorry. Hearing to the pandemic. Okay, so Senate Bill 212 um, provides, basically says that the um, state, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment may not add to a certain list of, of vaccines that are required uh, for either uh, for children to either attend daycare or schools, the uh, the bill sponsor Senator Mark Steffen, who is an anesthesiologist, I believe, he said basically his uh, his motive for in, um, introducing this bill was to ensure that it was not um, mandated that children receive COVID nineteen shots before they attend school or daycare. So you had sort of your usual uh, group of folks who um, are opposed to vaccines and vaccine mandates uh, in favor of the bill. And then KDHE and some other health related organizations um, testified against the bill. So no action was taken today, it was just a hearing. And again, you've had a string of bills to cover. Uh, you <laughs> also listened to House Bill 2068 in Senate Federal and State Affairs. Fire, firearms, in this case, specifically dealing with concealed carry issues. That's right. It's a bill that would um, deal with reciprocity um, issues between the states as far as uh, concealed carry permits, but it was amended on the House floor last week, recently, uh, to say that um, 18 to 20 year old Kansans could receive a provisional concealed carry license. And of course, that would sort of loop them into at least, you know, some of the 18 year olds could possibly still be Kansas high school students. However, this bill does not change state law that allows school boards to prohibit uh, concealed carry within their school buildings. So this could, I think, potentially have some impacts for perhaps the Regents universities and post-secondary um, edu education institutions in Kansas, but um, as it is written now, does not impact uh, K-12 schools and their ability to prohibit concealed carry within their buildings or on campus. And then finally, Lee, you also uh, testified on House Bill 2039 and Senate Education. The old That's right. Bill. That's the, um, the bill that requires students to pass a civics test before they can uh, get their high school diploma in Kansas. Uh, we uh, testified against the bill in, uh, in cooperation with USA Kansas, the school administrators group. Uh, of course, um, Representative Steve Hubert, who's the chair of the Education Committee, he is the sponsor of the bill. He, um, this, he calls this his his passion project and a representative um, Hubert um, has been working on, on similar bills off and on for the past several years. Um, 
AG Derek Schmidt also appeared in favor of the bill. Um, opposing the bill were, uh, as I mentioned, KSB, USA Kansas, KNEA, and some really outstanding um, social studies and civics teachers in the state who, who really did a, a very nice job of explaining to committee members what civics education in Kansas is really all about and how just requiring kids who already have to take, you know, a full year of American government, have to take U.S. history, um, requiring them to just take a test uh, to pass high school, to get their high school diploma when they're already receiving some very, very good content in their classes is really, it's duplicative and it really, um, you know, intrudes on the State Board of Education's constitutional authority over public schools. So we opposed and the hearing was closed pretty quickly because uh, the Senate needed to get onto the floor. So um, no further action was taken on that bill today. A couple of other uh, things to note, the House Commerce Committee held a brief to, well, essentially just for the record, a hearing on House Bill 2442, which is another version of attempts to create a way of providing liability coverage for students in work-based learning. This has been an issue for a couple of years and KSB certainly supports the goal. We were working with United School Administrators, but we continue to have some problems with this bill, most notably because it basically allows school districts to buy insurance coverage that we don't think actually exists to cover what they want covered. So we are working, our insurance people, our legal people, USA, and we're, we're trying to work with some others about still seeing whether there's something that could be done to alleviate some of the liability concerns, whether we'll get that done by the end of the session, I, I don't know, but just know that that's out there and would also report that the Children and Seniors Committee in the House recommended Senate Bill 120, um, which is the kind of the, there are two versions of setting up a a special legislative oversight committee that's working its way through. Couple minutes left, let me just hit a couple things myself and then you guys can jump in if we have any time. Tomorrow, House Education has a hearing on Senate Bill 51, which would put the foster care education report card in statute. Thursday, the House Tax Committee has a hearing on uh, House Bill 2423, the House version of extending the statewide mill levy that's also contained in House Bill 2119, which is the school funding, education budget, private school expansion, uh, distance learning, limiting, trying to think of any other thing, uh, bonus giving uh, bill, but that has not yet been, we expect a debate on general orders at some point, it has not been scheduled. Uh, neither has the main house budget bill, um, which is House Bill 2397, be watching for that. We did get notice today that there was supposed to be a hearing tomorrow on Senate Bill 208 uh, dealing with female sports, transgender uh, female sports issues. That hearing was then rather quickly canceled. We don't know whether that's canceled or postponed. Um, we have not received word uh, of um, that it has been rescheduled again. This is really the last week. So if you're interested in that, uh, pay a lot of attention. I think Scott mentioned, of course, Senate Bill, the final action on Senate Bill 63, the truncated back to school bill is tomorrow. Guys, in about a minute and a half, anything else we need to cover right now? No, I think, did we want to mention Senate mm -hmm. Bill uh, 277, the tax, the statewide mill levy? and the Oh, notices? well, yes, and just note that negotiations are kind of continue to go on. Senate Bill 277 is the Senate version of extending the statewide mill levy. It's kind of been tied tied up in the fact that schools were brought into Senate Bill 13, which is the new property tax notification uh, bill that schools had long been out of but are now back in. I guess we can say efforts are being made to see whether there's a way to modify, if not eliminate schools in that bill. We are not aware of any resolution to that yet. Um, so, the, And those bills also have kind of gotten tied up in now proposals to either lower the statewide mill levy to give some property tax relief or increase the exemption. So that probably has a fair amount of debate left to go. So uh, I guess our final words, remember 2119, probably the biggest issue before the House and K-12 funding could come up at any time. We'd encourage you to continue to speak to your members on that. We'll continue to send out some notices on that. Expect us again tomorrow night about this same time, unless there's a late afternoon hearing, get scheduled. With that, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.